Hey guys, uh, you won't believe what just happened. I just played a game on three minutes, Blitz game against Grandmaster Mitkov, from originally from Macedonia, but uh, lives in the United States. And he's an E5 player. Guess what? I played Bishop's opening and won in 14 moves. Let's go. So what happened in that game? Of course, I played E4. Uh, he went for E5 and I played you know my favorite bishop's opening about which i made a course on chessable and uh, it really goes well people are happy and if you know it's it was in top five theoretical courses in 2022 anyways after i played bishop c4 he won for knight c6 but just an option uh, one of the most common approaches by black here is when they play knight f6 threatening to take on e4 and then if you feel like in gambiting mode, then you can go with d4, kind of Pontiani gambit, kind of Urus of gambit. But if you feel like uh, hyper solid to play some long theoretical battles and to rely pretty much on my analysis from the course, go with the bulletproof approach with d3. Anyways, uh, he went for knight c6, I played knight c3, and he went for knight f6. It's always one of my most favorite moments when they play symmetrical bishop c5 and when I go for the copycat variation, I simply destroy them all here. And you know that famous queen f6, knight d5, uh, queen f2, king d1, and believe it or not, our king is safer than this king on e8, especially because c7, g7, and everything else is about to drop. He went for knight f6, I played d3, and there are four moves here. Knight a5, bishop c5, bishop b4, and hyper solid bishop e7. My opponent went for seemingly most attractive and most active by black. It's bishop c5. I don't care so much about that. I play f4. To be honest with you, this happens in 50% of the games when it comes to black moves. I'm talking about bishop c5. And that's certainly one of our favorite lines in the bishop's opening. I know that f4 doesn't make much sense. I remember when I was younger, when I saw this opening being played by white, I was like, how could you play an opening like this? It looks so weakening. Your king is looking so bad. That bishop is looking like a monster. Nowadays, I'm not anymore uh, of that opinion. Anyways, after f4, my opponent went for castle. I played knight f3. That's simply uh, the best move. I spoke to one of my students and the guy uh, who uh, have that core, who has that course, uh, Bishop's Opening, and he told me, Maya, uh, whenever you said, whenever you can, you should be going with f5. And in this case, if you go with f5, uh, he's going to go with the knight d4, followed by c6 and d5. So that's why I believe it's a little bit better to do knight f3. Anyways, when I play knight f3, my opponent went for knight g4. He immediately wants to take advantage of my weak dark squares, of potentially weak f2 square, of my weak king, of the queen, and the rook that are absolutely bad. But you know what? If you're familiar with the main ideas of the bishop's opening, uh, you should feel very comfortable in a situation like this, even though I know that at first glance this position looks so terrible to you. I played knight g5 straight away. I am threatening this knight. He can't play knight f2 because I'll be playing queen h5 h and I'm just going to attack both. Pawns on f7 and h7 and he's about to resign. So that's why he played d5, attacking my bishop with tempo, defending his knight with tempo and it's one of the best engine moves as well. I captured by knight because my philosophy was let me just add one more piece into the attack onto the king side. And here, it's a very important uh, theoretical moment. Uh, he went for h6, but instead of going for h6, he should be going with e takes f4. Then we play bishop takes f4, threatening on c7, and they go h6, threatening knight. A few days ago, uh, when I played a game in the same opening, I played h3, which was a little bit surprising for my opponent there was some fm and uh, the guy captured on g5 i captured on g4 he took my piece and everything looks so cool like they're up a piece but they actually forgot that with the uh, absolutely fascinating bishop on c4 they can never play any f6 and on top of all that my queen went on h3 my opponent played one more move 
played knight e5, and when I moved my queen to h3, he resigned. Just like you see, uh, this is how you should be playing desperation. So that's why after h3, they gotta go to e5, you bring the knight back to f3, they take rook e8, play a little bit illogical uh, queen e2, because I don't like so much placing my queen uh, under the x-rays of the rook. He went for bishop f5, attacking my pawn on e4, uh, e5, f6, long castles, and bishop e3, knight e4, queen f2. This could be possibly critical line of desperation. Uh, none of these guys ever played that against me. And after knight g5, my opponent went for h6. I was very happy when I saw this move because I was like, okay, maybe you want to attack my knight, but it's not a big deal. I'm not going to play knight f3 anyways because I'm familiar with the ideas from the course. So f5. Now I'm disconnecting by f5, uh, knight on g4 and the bishop on c8. Okay. I'm saying, feel free to take, be my guest, but then I'm going to capture on g4. I'm going to capture next move on g5. You can never play f6 because I'm going to give you a check and you're going to be in real danger. So after f5, knight f2, he goes after queen and the rook and queen h5. Once again, we reached a very interesting moment of this game. It's already 10th move. Don't forget, I'm playing against GM. Pretty good player. Was uh, almost 2600 feet uh, uh, nowadays he's around 25.50 and I still defeated him in 14 moves. And you're wondering how. You already can see like lots of tactical threats. My opponent, uh, I was expecting to take on g5, which happened to me in a couple of bullet games. Then you play bishop g5 and when they play queen e8 or whatever, you just go knight f6 check, winning the queen actually, that's checkmate. And when you when they capture, you recapture and they can't stop queen h8 or queen g5 with mate. That's why when I played queen h5, my opponent immediately went for knight a5. He went after the bishop that is a very annoying piece on c4. And I'll be honest with you, up to this moment, my opponent spent minute and 20 seconds. I spent only 15 to 20 seconds. And here I was like, uh, I see a very interesting idea. Can I go with queen g6, threatening mate on h7? And if he takes, I'm going to give check, check by bishop, check by knight. And when he goes like this, I'm going to deliver this checkmate. And I was, you know, like simply so attracted with this idea. And I almost played queen g6. And then in the last moment, I realized, but wait a sec. What if he just takes the knight? And then when I take like this, even in the worst case scenario, uh, he can play a line like knight takes c4. He doesn't have to do anything else, but he can also take the queen very easily, and that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty much enough. Uh, and I said, uh, so I can play queen h5. And then I started thinking and thinking and thinking, and from a minute and forty-five seconds, I dropped to one minute. So after almost two minutes of thinking in a three-minute game, uh, I just said, okay, I'm gonna go for it. F6, and there is a very nice practical uh, moment here. I played f6 uh, and I saw that if my opponent takes on c4, I should take on g7 and I couldn't see clearly whether I was supposed to play knight f7 or knight e6. Probably I would play knight e6 not to give them some escaping f7 square when they take by pawn. And when they go like this, queen h6, knight f6. And to be honest with you, I saw there is something stinky about the black's game here. And I said, okay, there must be something here. I'm going to go for it. So sometimes you just have to listen to your intuition. You don't always, and you can't always come up and calculate just everything. Anyways, in this position, I played f6. My opponent helped me a lot. He just played bishop g4. He was like absolutely uh, not familiar with the tactical idea I was going about. And from another point of view, I was like very happy when I saw bishop g4 because it gives me a chance to make a masterpiece and to uh, publish it out here on my channel. After I played queen g6, I threatened to take on g7. He captured on g6. I played knight e7, which was double check. And guess what? When he went for this, I came up with this beautiful mating picture. Hope that you enjoyed in this small presentation of the bishop's opening. Uh, it's still good.
it's still working so good. I see it more and more in practice, way he played it this year in Vikanza 1 against Varverdam. So it's really nice, it's really good, it's really one of those side, but from another point uh, of view, uh, lines where you actually direct the play. So enjoy with it, uh, get the chessable course about the bishop's opening and start butchering your opponents. Thanks and see you next time.